Today's topic of conversation is my review of the F1 2018 winter testing season and it's been fun, but it's done. All has been said and done now, the teams have done all that they possibly can and our next event is practice on the 23rd of March for the Australian Grand Prix. Welcome to the channel and today I'm going to do a quick breakdown of what we're going to be doing today, what we're going to be covering and then we'll just jump straight into it. So, first of all I'm going to be covering the best times, the worst times, the most laps, the least laps and covering the order of the teams throughout testing. So who's done the best, who's done the worst, I'll do a little review of each team and then afterwards I'm going to compare my initial season predictions with the order of the teams now. So hopefully that all makes sense and like I said let's just crack on with it and first of all we're going to start with the timings by teams. So the fastest lap by anyone was Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari with a 117.1 in the Hypersoft tyres. Second was McLaren actually, that's very interesting to see there. Fernando Alonso with a 117.7 also on the Hypersoft. Third was Red Bull, Daniel Ricciardo 118 also on the Hypersoft. Fourth was Renault, Carlos Sainz with that particular lap with a 118.0 also on the Hypersoft. And fifth was Kevin Magnussen in the Haas with a 118.3 on the Supersoft. So solid job there from Kevin Magnussen, the first guy, the only guy in the top 10 to be on the super soft tyres. Great job there. Sixth was Pierre Gasly for Toro Rosso. So Toro Rosso had the sixth fastest lap overall with a 118.3. He was on the hyper soft. Seventh was Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton. His quickest lap with a 118.4 with ultra soft tyres. Eighth was Force India with Esteban Ocon with a 118.9 on the hyper softs. Ninth was Sauber with Charles Leclerc with a 119.1 on the hyper softs. And 10th and last place with Williams, Sergei Sorokin with the 119.9. But he was on the soft tyres. Very, very interesting there. Big, big mixed bag there of all of the teams. The official Pirelli offset for each tyre, so the Hyper Softs gets you an extra 0.7 seconds of time, the Ultra Soft 0.6, Super Soft 0.4, and the Soft 0.8. That is based off of the medium tyre compromise. So, that is the fastest lap by teams. The order then there was Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull, Renault, Haas, Toro Rosso, Mercedes, Force India, Sauber and Williams. However, like I said, and like I will repeatedly say, I said it all last week, and I'll say it until the beginning of the season, these times we cannot say are reliable whatsoever. You see Williams at the bottom of the pecking order with a soft tyre fastest lap. You just really can't tell who's the quickest car and who's the least quickest car, but you can have a good estimated guess. And I used data from several different sources, Sky Sports F1, BBC Sports F1, Autosport Magazine, Motorsport.com, all of these, and I have compiled a list that I'm going to be using later on of the pecking order of the 2018 teams. But now we're going to move on to the fastest laps overall, and like I said, Sebastian Vettel had the fastest lap of anybody with a 117.1. I'm not going to go through all of the timings of these drivers, but I will say the order of each particular driver. So like I said, first place, Sebastian Vettel, second was Kimi Raikkonen, so both Ferraris with the top two times, third Fernando Alonso, fourth Daniel Ricciardo and fifth Carlos Sainz, so no Mercedes in the top five, sixth Kevin Magnussen, seven Pierre Gasly, eight Lewis Hamilton, nine Roman Grosjean, rounding out the top ten was Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes, eleventh Nico Hülkenberg, twelfth Sokol van Dorn, thirteenth Brendan Hartley, fourteenth Esteban Ocon, 15th Charles Leclerc, 16th Sorokin, 17th Ericsson, 18th Robert Kubica, 19th Perez, 20th place was Max Verstappen, very interestingly. 21st place Lance Stroll and rounding out the Formula 1 2018 testing grid is Nikita Mazepin in the Force India, who only tested on day one, who was a whopping 6 seconds off Lance Stroll in 21st place. So Nikita Mazepin there is very interesting the fact that he had a call up from Force India on that very first day. It was mainly because Nicholas Latifi was supposed to test on the first Thursday but he didn't end up doing so and so Nikita Mazepin was brought in just for that one-off testing session just to Force India. They were going through a rough patch this whole winter testing which I will go through 
but mainly it was due to the branding and I think Mazpin was just on that very first day just so the guys at Force India could sort of plan what they were going to do for testing and not have too much pressure on that very first day. So we're going to go on to the most laps completed by each team now and only one team completed more than a thousand laps and that was Mercedes. Of course it was Mercedes, fantastic job from them over the winter, hiding their true pace with very slow lap times indeed compared to the rest of the teams. However, I think we all know that's not going to be the case once we get to Australia. Second most completed laps was Ferrari with 929, a good solid job from them. And third was Toro Rosso, fantastic job from them over winter testing. If you are unaware, Toro Rosso for the first time this season and for the first time in their history will be using Honda engines, obviously McLaren said no more to the Honda engines after three awful seasons and that left Toro Rosso to bear the burdens of that really just so Honda could stay in the sport just so McLaren could then switch to a Renault engine and Renault would only allow that if they could have Carlos Sainz so it was a big domino effect there which ended up with Toro Rosso having the Honda engine and it looked very good and 822 laps is a considerable amount more than McLaren have done for the past three seasons so Toro Rosso, great job there. Two relatively new drivers as well, in the form of Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley, who only did a handful of laps at the end of last season after Sainz went to Renault and Kvyat was kicked out of the team. So this is their two first full season in Formula 1, their first full rookie season. And fingers crossed they do well. Good solid testing. And I think Toro Rosso are going to surprise a lot, a lot of people. And Looking at my predictions, they've surprised me already. So, good job from them. The fourth most laps completed, surprisingly, was Williams. Only three laps less than Toro Rosso with 819. And Williams, very quiet over testing. The most interesting thing probably that came out of their team was the fact that Robert Kubica was back in the car over winter testing. And it was great to see, actually, Robert back in a car. He's been on this F1 comeback now for quite some time. And I've been saying that I would not be surprised if he came back halfway through the season, although yesterday was set to be Kubica's last testing, but because it was such good weather and there'd be so little of that throughout testing, Kubica gave up the day, gave up his seat for the day to give it to Sorokin and Stroll, which was a great gesture from him and perhaps suggests that he's not expecting to be in the car this season and he really wants Stroll and Sorokin to do well and Williams to be as high up as possible. And they're definitely a team, Williams, that... 100% sandbagged throughout the testing and they're very hard to predict where they're going to be in terms of the pecking order. In fifth place with the most amount of laps was Renault with 815. So very close between Torosso, Williams and Renault. Only seven laps between all of them. That's a very good job from those three. Renault really looks solid actually throughout testing. Very impressed with that whole team and I think they're going to do some special things this season. I predicted a win for Sainz in my predictions video and it still could happen if we have a Baku incident but again this season obviously he could be there if he if it all goes well Sainz impressed with Hulkenberg impressed with as well he's doing fantastic stuff there and he's going to be a bit more of a mentor this season Sainz hasn't had a mentor ever in F1 I don't think he needs it but I think sometimes it's a good benchmark you know Sainz has always been fighting drivers his age, Verstappen, then Kvyat. And I think at the end of last season when he was up against Hulkenberg, I think he upped his game a little bit more. He was plagued with liability issues, yes. But I think this season, Renault, Hulkenberg's sights, even Hulkenberg last season wasn't being pushed to his limits because Palmer was so bad. And I think this season they're going to be pushing each other both to the limit and Renault, I expect good things. In sixth place, was Sauber for the most amount of laps. They were off so many times, Ericsson and Leclerc, but they've still managed 786 laps. Very good job from Alpha Sauber. Their car isn't looking particularly quick, but they're in that pack which is really hard to work out where they are. Sauber, Alpha Sauber, whatever you want to call them, solid job. Leclerc, for my liking, spent too much time in the gravel <laughs> throughout winter testing. But their new partnership looks like it's going quite well. 
no real major reliability issues throughout testing. Solid, solid job. Next then, on the list, is Red Bull. Red Bull? What? How can Red Bull be so far down? And yet in the pecking order, look so good. <laughs> They've only completed 783 laps. That's about 300 less than Mercedes. Red Bull were really plagued with issues in that first week, especially Max Verstappen. But they look solid. And they look like one of the top teams. Perhaps even in front of Ferrari. I'm going to tell you what I think the actual pecking order is now, like I say, a bit later on. But Red Bull look very good. And so this stat with not many laps completed, I think we can disregard. Because 700 laps, all of these teams, the least is 619. All of them, that's solid running. It really is, it's just when you compare them to other teams, perhaps not so good. And Red Bull being 300 laps less than Mercedes, that is time lost. And Red Bull, fingers crossed that doesn't haunt them later on this season. But do I think it will? Not really. This is an Adrian Newey car. The Renault engine does seem to be much better this season, which I did predict. It does seem to be definitely the case. And for the Ferrari engine, it does look like it has some issues out of the rear diffuser. There's smoke coming up out of the exhaust of most of the cars. On, I was watching Ted's notebook, actually, on Sky, and he did a big rundown all about it, explaining this oil issue that they have in the Ferrari engines, and that is causing smoke pouring out the back of these Ferrari engines when the car started up or just a tiny little flex of smoke when the car's going around the track. It'll be very interesting to see but it looks like that Renault engine and Red Bull could be doing special things this season. So very interesting indeed. In eighth place is Force India. Um, that's not good is it? I've been saying all week what awful testing they've had. No real big issues and yet they've not even done a hundred more laps than McLaren. Force India, fourth place the last two seasons. Fantastic job. Coming from nowhere. And now they're throwing it away. I've said it this week, and if you haven't seen this week's videos, that's cool. No worries about that. But I'll just quickly say, VJ Malia, the owner of Force India, is going through some big court cases at the moment. So he is preoccupied with that. And Force India are looking to be taken over. And in the next few days... It very well could be announced that we have a new F1 team on the grid called Rich F1 Team. And it looks 50% likely now. It was supposed to be announced this week, and obviously we've still got two more days. But no more real news outlets have jumped on that story, so maybe looking less likely. But no matter what, Force India are trying to push through a rebrand, but they're taking their time, and it's messed up their winter testing. I'm 100% sure of that. Force India not good enough, Ocon looks solid, Perez, I don't think I saw him anywhere near the top of the times this week whatsoever, poor from Force India, they need to do better. Haas then are in ninth place with the most amount of laps completed with 900, 900, oh I read that wrong, 694 is what I was supposed to say, it's, it's, it's a funny old story with Haas actually, because the issue here was their first week, their first week was awful, Haas, but their second week was very, very good, with Grosjean and Mangson doing some particularly good laps, to be perfectly honest with you, and particularly respectable laps, especially Magnussen getting the second quickest time on the second to last day. And Haas were a team that I felt would go backwards this season. 694 laps isn't incredible whatsoever, you know, that's 400 behind Mercedes, but Haas are not going to be at the front. They just need to make little improvements here and there. It's going to be very packed within that midfield, and so they have an okay driver lineup. I don't think it's the worst on the grid, it's not the best. I think Roman Grosjean is a very underrated driver. Magnussen, I think, is maybe a little bit overrated, but they've got a solid lineup there. And Haas, they just need to be picking up points here and there, making sure they're not at the back of the grid. And this second week, as I said, did look promising from Grosjean and Magnussen. So watch out for Haas this season. They could be a little bit of a dark horse, but who knows? Only one team did less laps than Haas, and that was McLaren. I'm sure you're not surprised at that. First week was all right for McLaren, but this second week, so many failures. 
one day of clean running this week. Awful from McLaren, and yet they don't look that far away on the pace. They really don't. They look right up there. Okay, they're not going to be fighting for wins straight away. That's not going to happen. But, as the season gets on, on tracks that are a little more, a little more aerodynamically based, like Monaco, Hungary, Singapore, then McLaren could be there. And we've not been able to say that for a very long time, but despite 619 laps, not awful. And I've, I've seen it on a few media outlets saying, and it's very true, it's better to have the issues now in testing than it is in race one. And obviously that's really obvious, that statement, but it's 100% true. You know, McLaren have had all these failures, but now they know what potential failures could happen. And that's a really solid thing to be able to go into the season saying you know your flaws. So, McLaren, rounding up the top 10 with the most amount of laps, but I still don't think it's an awful run from any of the teams whatsoever, except Force India. Force India, in my opinion, have had the worst testing of anyone. Really been caught up in this rebranding, remarketing, and VJ Malia court case. And it's a shame, but in my opinion, Force India have had the worst test, and the best test, 100%, I think this, is Mercedes. Not because they had the best time, but because they just got on with it. They sandbagged the hell out of that car. No one has a clue how quick it is. Looking at the pure data, you think, oh, well, Ferrari, the two fastest lap, they're the quickest. But no, that Mercedes car is bloody quick. I think we all can see this, despite them being nowhere near the top. And the fact they've done that, to me, tells me that they're doing a fantastic job out of hiding that pace of that car and just being a solid, solid team for this season. And so this will now bring me on to my review of my predictions and what I think the actual running order is for the 2018 season. So despite much controversy on that particular video, the 2018 predictions video, obviously if you're unaware, I won't tell you who I think is going to be world champion, but I think that has changed. And what I'm going to be doing today, as I said earlier, is going through the constructors order that I thought was going to happen and what the actual constructors order is and who, if I was going to put money on it now, I think the world champion is going to be. So, we're going to start from the back and we're going to move forward. So I predicted that Torosso and Haas would be at the back of the grid and I think that's incorrect looking at testing now and... Like I said earlier, I've looked at all these different sources and I've compiled a list of their thoughts mixed with my thoughts now. So, the back of the grid, I think, is Sauber. I think they're still at the back it's from last season, which is a shame, I think, to be honest. And I thought Sauber were going to be a bit higher up, but it appears the back of the grid now is Sauber. And Torosso and Haas... I think could be in that back pack though. I think that's something I will say. I think the back three teams are Toro, So Haas and Salva. And they're the back three teams I put in my predictions. And so, yes, I thought Toro, So would be at the very back, but in, in real actual form, it looks like Salva are going to be. But the back three teams I have predicted correctly, Salva, Haas and Toro, So. However, still, we're not going to be 100% sure until we get to Melbourne. But, like I say, on the face of things, it looks like I got those three correct. In seventh place, I had predicted Force India. And once again, it looks like Force India are in seventh place. It looks like I've got that one bang on as well. Awful testing from them. But it really looks like they've gone back in the field. The only saving grace for them looks like it's going to beat the Mercedes engine and the rise of Esteban Ocon. But apart from that, Force India, it did not look good whatsoever. And people really scrutinised me for that particular decision. Everyone said that Force India would not be near the back of the field. And if testing is correct, then I'm correct. Force India are gonna go back this season and the haters have been quiet now already. We're not even at the first race and the haters about Force India have already shut up because they know I was right on this particular one. Force India have gone backwards 
And once again, I will say, before I get too cocky here, we won't know until Australia, obviously. But Force India looks like they've taken a real hit this season and it looks like they won't be making Q3 in the first race of the season. In sixth place, I had Williams. And that's also <laughs> what I've got down here for the actual testing. I think Force India and Williams, I didn't think this in my initial predictions, but it looks like now, it looks like they're going to be interchangeable race to race. So Williams, we know, a very quick car on particular circuits. Obviously, we saw in Baku, they did very well with Lance Stroll. And in Monza, they did very well with Lance Stroll because they're quick, long circuits, not aerodynamically based. And I think that's going to be the change in between the likes of Williams and Force India on particular races on how well they're going to be doing. It's going to be depending on if it's a quick car or an aerodynamic car, although both of those teams are known for being quick. So very interesting there. But I think sixth and seventh now and in my predictions were Force India. But the top five is where it gets interesting because not a single one of these I've predicted correctly where they are now. So the top five, I have used the Sky Sport F1 top five. Their running order is what I've used here. And I think they're correct. And it's so slightly different to mine, it's a bit painful. So in fifth, I predicted Renault. And in fifth, Sky Sports have used McLaren. And I think that's fair enough. McLaren have had a very dodgy start to testing and it's hard to really predict where they're going to be. In fourth, they put Renault and I think they said on their show that Renault and McLaren in fourth and fifth are definitely going to be there or thereabouts but it's going to be interchangeable. In fourth, I put Ferrari and that's only one position away from where Sky had them. But I, th I really thought Ferrari would be going backwards and it really appears that they have gone backwards as Sky Sports have put them third. So in fifth I put Renault, in fourth I put Ferrari, in third I put McLaren. Whereas Sky Sports, in fifth I put McLaren, in fourth I put Renault, and in third I put Ferrari. So it's the same three teams there. But I know obviously you can't really take, you can't say you've done well because you've got the same three teams in the, the roughly the same area. But I'm only one position off, except McLaren which I put third, and Sky put fifth. But I think these three teams, Ferrari, Renault and McLaren, might be interchangeable. Ferrari really seem to be the unknown quantity in this, in this whole front running group. I think these five are definitely the front pack. I think obviously we have Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari are the front three. Then we have Renault and McLaren and then we have the rest of the field. That's what it's going to be this season and it's going to be whether you call Renault and McLaren the midfield or whether you say you've got the top five teams and the bottom five teams. Now, in my initial predictions, I said the Constructors' Champions would be Red Bull. But it appears that that's not the case and that Mercedes might have one of their most dominant years since 2014. And it's very difficult because Mercedes have done so well in testing hiding their true pace and Red Bull have had quite a few issues. On screen now, actually, you can see the starting up the Ferrari oil smoke thingy that I mentioned earlier. Just While that's there, I just want to let you know that's what I was on about on screen there, coming out of the exhaust. But Red Bull, very close, it appears to be. And that Renault engine looks like it's been made a step up this season, as well as Red Bull. And I think it will be close between Mercedes and Red Bull. And it looks like that could be the case. Again, Mercedes, they've done so well in testing. Everyone's thinking that this is going to mean they're going to be miles ahead. And I'm not going to change any of my predictions. I want that to be known. My predictions back then are my predictions. I wanted them to be before any information had come out for the season, before testing. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to see... Just based on last year and trends, patterns in the past few seasons, I wanted to see if I could predict it. And I don't think I'm too far off. So many people had a go. And granted, most people had issues with my drivers, with what I thought on particular drivers, which is fair enough. We've all got our own opinions. But the cars, I really wanted to see how close I could get. And again, I'll say it, we're not there yet. We haven't got to race one. And by the end of the season, I'm sure it'll be a completely different pecking order. But right now, 
it looks like I'm pretty close. But, as I mentioned a minute ago, I think the world champion, if I was going to put money on it, I would say it's going to be Lewis Hamilton. Spoilers now from my predictions video for the Drivers World Championship, so you've got a couple of seconds now to pause to... I'm only going to just rounding off the video now, so you can just end it there, drop a like <laughs> if you want, don't worry, don't worry, but hopefully you have enjoyed at this point. But then, spoilers time, now I predicted Ricardo would be world champion, and I think it will be close. I think it's going to be Hamilton or Ricardo. I still think that's definitely the case. It'll be one of those two. People got mad that I think Ricardo is better than Verstappen. And that's something I did want to mention today. So the idea of today, as I said earlier, was to mention testing, but it was also to review my predictions. And the biggest issue I had wasn't the fact I put Ferrari so far down, although that was an issue, which I think is fair enough. People, I, I will cover that in a second. But the biggest issue was I thought Ricardo was better than Verstappen. And that everyone said Verstappen would have beaten Ricardo. Verstappen had so much worse reliability. But I, I want to challenge them to look at the stats. I think Verstappen, I have said it, I think is a bit more of a rash driver than Ricardo. I think Ricardo is a solid driver. I think if you put them up 1v1, probably Verstappen would win five times to four times. I think they're very, very close. Verstappen, I think, has got that edge. He's a little bit younger, a little bit less in experience, but he's a bit more feisty on track. Ricardo gets the job done, however. He doesn't get involved in silly turn one incidents. I know I'm not talking about Singapore there, but for the likes of Spain, Ricardo's a bit more conservative in early parts of the races and gets the job done at the end of races. And like I say, that's going to anger some fans, and, that, and that's fair enough. And you've got to be aware as well, Ricardo had some awful luck. He really did. It wasn't on the level of Max Verstappen. But you think that very first race of the season, he DNF'd. And the luck for Red Bull last year was nowhere. You look at the amount of times both of them retired, and Verstappen only retired one more time than Ricardo. So all those people that were telling me that Verstappen had so much worse luck than Ricardo, was that really the case? And Ricardo retired in Mexico which was Red Bull's best track of the season. They had the best car there. And yet, Ricardo retired. And so, the fact that Ricardo was a considerable amount head in the championship and only finished one more race than Max Verstappen and Ricardo only won one race compared to Verstappen's two, I, th I think Ricardo is, is the more solid driver. I, again, I think they're very close, and I, and I don't think I'm a, a one way or the other. And I think on their day, either driver can beat the other. But as I said, for a World Championship fight so early on in their career, I think Verstappen is going to have those few little hiccups, whereas I think Ricardo would be able to get that car to the line. But I think it'll be close between all three of them. And someone also wasn't happy what I said about Bottas not being a Class A driver. And I, I will stand by that. I think he's a very solid driver. I said he's a B driver, you know, in terms of grades. I just don't think he quite has that star quality. You look in the United States, for example, drivers like Hamilton, Ricardo, Verstappen, they've got that little bit extra, which Bottas doesn't quite have. Bottas is a lot more complacent than those drivers, which in some cases can be fantastic. You look in Austria, you look in Russia, under those immense pressures, you, uh, Abu Dhabi, his three races he won, was under huge amount of pressure, and he didn't bottle it. And so he's got he's got talent, Bottas. He is a great driver, and he's probably in the... Yeah, well, he is in the top ten drivers on the grid. But for me, he just doesn't quite have that star talent, but he could easily just switch it on this season. And I think last season, for Bottas, was just a bit of a blip. And this season, like I say, he could easily come back and be fighting for that World Championship with Ricardo Verstappen and Hamilton. But, if I was to put money on it, I would say Hamilton. The real big issue with my predictions was McLaren. I really thought McLaren were going to be much higher than they are. I thought they were going to be right with Red Bull and in turn be fighting for that championship, but it doesn't look like it throughout the testing. But again, they're hard to judge because they've had so many issues, but it could happen. We know Alonso's a special driver. We know Van Dorn at the end of last season was beating Alonso. 
So it could happen, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And the Ferrari thing that I just wanted to quickly mention as well, people had an issue when I said that Ferrari have a good season and then a bad season, okay? And people didn't quite understand what I meant. So let's go back to 2008, okay? One point off the World Championship. 2009, nowhere. 2010, in the World Championship fight up to the last race. 2011, nowhere. 2012, up to the last fight in the last race. Didn't quite win it. 2013, nowhere. 2014, again, not a great season for them. 2015, back to winning races with Sebastian. 2016, nowhere. 2017, fighting for the World Championship didn't quite get to do it. And so, 2018, it makes sense that they go backwards. And it looks like, from testing, that's certainly what happened. A very controversial video today. And I think just like my predictions video, this will get a mixed response. It was almost a 50-50 likes to dislikes on uh, that video, which obviously is it's a little bit disheartening in a sense, especially because so many people believed I shouldn't be allowed an opinion, but hey ho, some people just like that on the internet, aren't they? You're teething problems for some. But what, what do you guys think? Do you think I've got a team particularly wrong in where you think they are? Do you think perhaps McLaren are as bad as they were last year? Do you think Ferrari, with the quickest laps in testing, are actually the best team on the grid and they're going to be the ones to beat this season. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. But that's that's testing over now. That's testing completely done. I'm going to do a video tomorrow all about Formula 2 testing if you're interested in that. Formula 2 is so underrated and I think this season will be the best Formula 2 season of all time. Some fantastic drivers, some fantastic young British drivers in that season, in that series, sorry, this season. But that'll be out tomorrow. The following day, I've got a Formula 1 2018 beginner's guide, if you guys fancy looking at that. But as I said yesterday, if you're watching a testing video, I'm sure you don't want to watch a beginner's guide, but that's more for people that just fancy getting into F1. And then, I've got one of my documentaries to do, which, for this particular week, I think I'm going to do a career of video. The career of a particular driver. Because I want to start doing that. Again, the documentary series, I really love doing that and the Raikkonen one I really enjoyed spending my time doing and so what I think I'm going to do is make that a weekly series. First I'm going to set up a, a couple of documentary series to start off so we have the question series with Raikkonen, the career of I'm going to do as well and then there'll be some one-off documentaries that I'm also working on that Simon Larson has given me one to do which is fantastic. I've also said I'm going to do one about Formula E replacing Formula 1 in the future but that's all to come up on this channel in the next few weeks. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video. It's been an interesting one, it's been a long one as well, so thank you if you've made it this far. Very impressive there. But guys, as I say, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you've got any thoughts, chuck them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.